So as we go through the second chapter of Nadarim, we're going to get into more questions about speech or indeterminate speech. And the Mishnah begins in on the fourth Mishnah. The fourth Mishnah begins, Stam Nadarim Lahachmir. Stam is a hard word to translate in English. I've Gahati translates it, and I've given it here unspecified. Stam means something where it sort of means ordinary or just, yeah, unspecified is quite a good translation. In other words, there's nothing special about it. Stam nadarim lahachmir. Unspecified vows are interpreted strictly. So we're, we're strict on these ones. And specified vows are interpreted leniently. And we, can we, we really don't understand this saying, but we've seen many times before in the Masech, in the, in the order of Nashem, that the Mishnah gives a general principle and that it explains it. So we're going to explain it. Kate Sad. But Mishnah asks, how does it work? So we'll find out. Amar, Haray Alai Haray Alai Kavasa Maluach Uchain Nesach. He said, Behold, this is to me a salted meat or as wine of libation. Now, remember that this classic form of a net air is we say something is like a korban. That's your classic form. This loaf of bread is like a korban. Therefore, I can't eat it. Because if I dedicated it as a korban, then I can't eat it. It belongs to the temple. So salted meat, well, remember, it, it's a verse in Vayikra. We bring salt on all our sacrifices. And yain nesech, yain nesech is wine which is poured out on the altar. So these are both dedicated. But... But are we talking about idolatrous wine, for example, or holy wine? And that's what the Mishnah will explore. Im shel shemaim nadar asur. If he vowed by that which is to heaven, in other words, he, he vowed by wine which is going to be poured out on the altar in Jerusalem, it's asur, it's forbidden, i.e. the vow holds. Throughout the Mishnah of Nazarim, when the Mishnah says asur, which literally means forbidden, we mean the object is forbidden, i.e. the vow holds. But, mutar. if he swore by something, by idolatrous sacrifices or idolatrous wine, mutar. It's permitted, i.e. the vow doesn't hold. The im stam asur. And if he didn't specify which one, it's forbidden. Arei alek cherem. Behold, he said, this is to me like a cherem. Im kherem shel shemaim nadar asur. If he made a, uh, if he was talking about a cherem for heaven, in other words, he's consecrated this object to the, the temple, then it's it's um, asur, it's forbidden, i.e. the vow holds. The im shel kawanim mutar. If it was a cherem to the priests, so al the priests have a lot of property which is just made over to them. And they've always owned this property. The, the, there's a verse in um, Bamidbar, it's chapter 18, I think it's verse 14. Any harem in Israel belongs to the priest. So there's a lot of harem property that already belongs to the priest. Well, if it already belongs to the priest, he hasn't made a decision to devote it. So he, isn't, he hasn't done anything there. Im stam, he, he hasn't specified asur. Uh, im, um, so he, he im im um, im shall call on him. If it's if it's the priest's harem, mutar, it's permitted. He hasn't done anything. But im stam, if it's unspecified, his vow is forbidden. We'll see. This mishnah always ends with these words. But im stam asur, if it's unspecified, his vow is forbidden. Arei alei kamaser. Maybe he says. Behold, to me, this is as a tithe. Im ke, he's, well, im ke maser nadar asur. If he vowed tithes of beasts, it's forbidden. Tithes of beasts have to be taken to the temple and counted off. And uh, one in so many is given to the priests. So this is actually, this is designated for the priests. 
So he's made a designation by determining that something is ma'aser behema. So it's asur, it, it's the, the vow works. But im shel dagan, if it's a grain tithe, mutar, why is it permitted? Well, grain tithe, actually anybody can eat a grain tithe. You take it to Jerusalem, you eat it there in sanctity, or you exchange it for money, and you take the money to Jerusalem, and the person that took it instead of the money can eat it. The grain tithe is not just reserved for the temple. The im stum, but if he didn't specify im stum, Asur, if he didn't specify, it's forbidden. Maybe he's going to say, look, this is like, this is to me like Truma. If he vowed, if he's talking about the Truma of the temple chamber, and here, uh, the, the, in modern Hebrew, the verb Taran means to donate. And we're talking here about the, for example, the Harsh Kalim, which are given to the temple chamber for its upkeep again this is something that once is designated belongs to the temple it can't be reused for any other purposes so if he vows that something is like it it can't be um yeah it, it, it can't be repurposed for any other purpose and so the mishnah rules asur is forbidden the vow works but even shall goran if it's the trumer of the of the threshing floor well, the trimmer of the threshing floor is just given to a local Kohen. So and who can sell it, by the way? Lots of different people can eat the trimmer of the threshing floor. So in this case, it's mutar. It's not handed over to the temple. It's permitted. And if you didn't specify, in stam asur. If unspecified, it's forbidden. Divrei rabbi meir. And sages are going to disagree here. So the sages are going to say something which maybe is an important principle about language and maybe we'll close here because this is a complicated mission maybe we'll just close here but the sages are going to say this is locality dependent because of course language depends on the depends on custom and it depends on the listener and it depends on the custom and the knowledge of the listener so language is not precise the sages say Stam truma bihuda asura. Um, the sages say, look, unspecified truma in Judea is forbidden. Uva Galil muteret, but in Galil is permitted, in Galilee is permitted. She'ain an shei ha Galil makirin et trumat alishkat, because the people of Galilee are unfamiliar with the trimmer of the temple chamber. Everybody in Judah, everybody in Judah lives near Jerusalem. And they know this idea that the half shekel is, is collected and is devoted to the temple chamber. But somehow the people of Galil are unfamiliar with this idea. So in, in, um, in Galil, the meaning of trimmer is really quite indeterminate. But in Judea, everybody knows that trimmer belongs to the temple. So the vow works in Judea, but it doesn't work in Galil. And the same for Charan. Stam Charamin, Behuda Mutarin. Just an, an unspecified Charan in Judea is permitted. So we're going to have the opposite way around now. Remember the unspecified Truma in Judea was forbidden because the people in, in Judah understand about Truma. Somehow it, we're going to see that they don't really understand about Charan, or perhaps not. Stam charamim bi mutarin, unspecified charamim in Judea are permitted. Uva, uva galil asurin, but in Galil, in the Galilee, they're forbidden. She'ain an shei ha galil makirin et charamei koanim. Because the people of Galilee are really unfamiliar with priestly charamim. The people of Galil only know a cheram as belonging to the temple. So if I refer to a cheram in the Galil, I'm referring to something of the temple. Interesting. In general, by the way, the people of Galil seems to be less familiar with anything. And OK, this Mishnah is probably taught near Yavne. So maybe it's taught in the south where we're close to Yuvda. And the people of Galil are maybe considered a little bit, a little bit less educated. Clearly, this is the, you know, this Mishnah comes from the time when the temple stands. So the people of Galil are less educated, but that means that the interpretation of vows in the Galil is different from the interpretation of vows in Yudah.